that sets the Tea Party apart um, from many others is they have a very uh, traditional view of the American dream, a Tocquevillian view, um, if you will. So essentially that they have this view that America is the land of opportunities and that all people, regardless of background, can succeed. Now this is not to say that you know, that other Americans don't have this view, but they have this belief even more so. And this permeates how they answer poll questions and also helps explain a lot of their other policy positions that other people have a hard time understanding. So let's go through this. Um, you often, so these are some signs I took at a Washington DC Tea Party protest um, on, here by the Capitol. Um, and you, you often see signs like this. Don't spread my wealth, spread my worth, work ethic. Um, stop punishing success and rewarding failure. Um, this is all part of a common theme throughout the Tea Party. Um, and for this to make sense, I thought we should go to some polling data. Um, now be prepared, I'm gonna show you a bunch of numbers um, that uh, I've conducted with the Reason Root poll that I direct at the Reason Foundation, um, where I actually had an opportunity to ask uh, Americans in general, but also Tea Partiers, um, about how they perceive the fairness of the American system, about opportunities in America. And you actually see they are distinct from most um, other people who do not self-identify with the Tea Party. Here we see 71% of Tea Party supporters think that all Americans have an equal opportunity to succeed, mm -hmm. compared to a majority, but still significantly less, 55% of non-Tea Party supporters. We asked about income inequality in the system as, a, as part of the economic system. Is this an acceptable part of the system or is, or is this a problem that we need to address? 68% of Tea Partiers um, say that it's an acceptable part of the system compared to a little less than half of everybody else. We asked about, given this income inequality that does exist, is it the responsibility of government to reduce these income differences or not? Um, here we see a very huge difference. 80% of Tea Partiers um, do not believe it is the role of government to redistribute wealth. Um, now this makes sense if you understand their other assumptions, that if this is a land, a, a place of equal opportunities for all people regardless of background, um, it, it reasons why they might also think that it is not the responsibility of government to redistribute wealth. This is where we see probably the most striking difference. We asked about, um, for those um, in this country who are poor, how good of a chance do they have for escaping poverty? This is a striking difference. 57% of Tea Partiers think that um, these poor individuals have a um, very good chance of escaping poverty compared to only 33% of non-Tea Party supporters. Um, in fact, you know, non-Tea Party supporters, 60% uh, of them think that the poor have very little chance of escaping poverty. This was so striking, I wanted to delve in a little deeper into the data um, and look at just different groups here. We have Republicans that are not Tea Partiers and not Republicans, Tea Party supporters and Libertarians. You see that almost everyone, um, Republicans, Libertarians, Democrats, and others, uh, do not think that the poor have a very good chance of escaping from poverty, but Tea Partiers think they do. One of the reasons they may feel this way is we asked essentially about the, the, the question of zero sum. Um, with, uh, with an economy, can wealth grow enough for everyone, or does the wealth of one person mean there's less wealth for, uh, for everybody else? Um, and we see that two-thirds of Tea Partiers think that wealth can grow enough for everyone. Less than half of everybody else agree. Instead, a majority of everyone else, when they think one person gets wealthy, that necessarily means that someone else has gotten poorer. Now, here, most Americans agree that hard work is ultimately the most important um, uh, trait in order to achieve success rather than luck or, or, or help from other people. But still, you still see a difference between Tea Partiers. Um, we actually, I, I've added in here Tea Party activists. This is a, an, an entrance poll that David and I conducted back in October of 2010. I mean, 97%, I mean, basically, this is margin of error we're talking about. <laughs> Essentially, everybody there thought hard work is what is, is, what is most important for determining success. Um, However, for non-Tea Party supporters, although still 
79% is overwhelming. Um, there's still a si sizable uh, percentage that also think that luck and help from other people is ultimately what matters most. So in sum, I think that this, uh, I should probably leave it there. Um, in sum, this shows you that the Tea Party members have a very unique view about upward economic mobility in, this, in, in, in our country. When I did my interviews with these individuals, a common theme kept coming up. Almost the same words were being used. I'm not sure if someone was using it on a talk show. I, I don't know exactly what explains it. But people would say, Emily, what I'm worried about most um, is losing the thing that makes America great. And I said, OK, well, what is that? What, what is, you know, in your opinion, what makes America great? And they would say, America is the place where you can be whatever it is you want to be. Now, they often would caveat this and, and point out that that is no guarantee of success. Actually, a lot of them had started businesses that had failed. Um, but they also said that what it does mean is it's a guarantee of opportunity to try, to try to succeed, to try and perhaps fail. Um, and that this ideology I had not really encountered with any of the other groups that I have studied in my own uh, professional research. Understanding this about the Tea Party helps explain a lot of their other positions, especially their strong economic conservatism, their fiscal conservatism. If you have a view that things are generally fair, that we work in a meritocracy, that hard work pays off, then uh, income redistribution may seem less necessary or even justified. The second point I'd like to make today is about Medicare. I hear this constantly um, with my research of the Tea Party movement. People will often bring up signs that look something like this. Um, Kate Zernicki uh, first documented this um, in one of the Tea Party rallies that she attended, where a woman had a sign that says, get your government hands off my Medicare. Um, this has led to a, uh, a thesis, an emerging thesis within the, within the academic world that suggests that the Tea Party is, in fact, a lover of big government, um, but only big government programs that benefit them. And that, in a sense, it's selfishness. Rather, instead of wanting big government programs for all, it's just big government programs for um, them, personally. Um, but this didn't seem to comport with what I was observing in my interviews with the Tea Party and also just looking at the, at, at the, uh, the polling data itself. So with the Reason Root poll, we decided to delve a, delve a little bit deeper into this issue to understand how Tea Partiers uh, can perceive and how do they conceive of entitlement programs in the United States. So we first asked about responsibility. Um, who is primarily responsible for sa saving for retirement? 72% of Tea Partiers thought that um, individuals should be primarily responsible for saving for retirement, compared to 56%, still a majority, but 56% of non-Tea Party supporters. We also asked about Medicare, um, slightly less, but still 59% of Tea Partiers also thought individuals should be primarily responsible for saving for paying for health insurance when they're retired. We asked them about opting out. Of, social, of, of, so, of entitlement programs like Social Security and Medicare. And overwhelmingly, you know, almost uh, three-fourths of Tea Partiers think this is fine. Um, less than half of everybody else agree. Um, the same is true of Medicare. Um, so this led me to wonder how, what um, explains the, the polling data out there that shows that Tea Partiers are unwilling to cut Social Security and Medicare in order to balance the budget. Everybody knows that the main drivers of our, uh, of our future and uh, of our future budget deficits will be the result of our entitlement programs unless we change them. So why wouldn't it be this, the movement that says they are against big government spending, why would they oppose um, reducing government spending for Social Security and Medicare? So we decided to ask the question, like everybody else asks, um, would you be willing to have your current or future Social Security benefits um, reduced as part of a plan to balance the federal budget and or ensure Social Security remains in place for future retirees? You see that a majority of Tea Partiers say no, 52% as do non-Tea Party supporters. But one thing that struck me when, uh, in my interviews um, and also my other research was that Tea Partiers would talk about Medicare and Social Security as if it were a savings account. They saved this money. 
Um, it, they sacrificed money today. They delayed consumption that they could have spent today, but instead saved it in a government program, in a government savings account, if you will, um, for, for when they're retired. So we said, OK, well, what would you be willing to accept benef uh, re reductions in your benefits if you were still guaranteed to receive at least the amount of money you have contributed into the system? You see the responses flip. Here, um, most Americans and Tea, Party, Tea Partiers, even slightly more so, 65% say yes, they would be willing to accept reductions to their own Social Security benefits if they were guaranteed to at least get their money back. Um, we asked the same thing about Medicare. Um, and when you promise, if you were to promise that they would still get the money that they put in, you see 67% would be open to reforming Medicare, even if that meant cuts, as long as they get their money back. We asked this in an August 2011 poll. Um, so we decided to revisit this last month in our September poll. And we just went straight for it. We asked, would you be willing to accept cuts in your current or future Medicare benefits if you were guaranteed to receive benefits at least equal to the amount of money that you and your employers contribute into the system? And here we find three quarters of Tea Partiers say yes. So often, I think what we were finding in this early polling data where Tea Partiers were reluctant to cut um, Medicare spending, what they were thinking is they were reluctant to have their own savings taken away rather than them thinking of it as a redistributive program in which they wanted to ensure they also received those redistributive payments. Okay, so in sum, although these two points are somewhat just disjointed, I think these are very important points to make and that polling data can help, um, help clarify um, where the Tea Party stands and how it is different from uh, those who do not identify with the Tea Party, namely that the Tea Party is very concerned with upward economic mobility and it continues to be so, which probably explains their strong commitment to fiscal conservatism, um, and also that they are open to entitlement, uh, entitlement reform.